Hey, what's going on, guys? I got a new microphone, so I hope you guys all enjoy this lovely new sound. And I do hope it sounds good, because if it doesn't sound good, then, uh, I don't know, we're just kind of stuck with it for a while. But today's video is going to be something a little different. Um, I'm going to be doing a new series going over each part of damage in Warframe. This first video is going to be going over physical damage, but I'm hoping to go over each aspect of damage. And if there's something you guys want me to cover, please leave a comment below. And I'm hoping that by breaking these up into different videos, it's going to make it easier to understand as well as easier for me to explain. But I thought we'd start out with this physical damage video simply because most basic weapons are going to have physical damage as their main damage types. And physical damage in Warframe consists of three basic damage types, impact, slash, and puncture, more commonly known in the community as IPS. You'll certainly see people reference IPS, and that simply just refers to physical damage. For this video, I'm going to be giving a brief overview of each type of damage, talk about when they're effective, and most importantly, how their status procs work. I'll also be going into how they affect weapons at the end of the video. The main reason you're going to be modding for a damage type is because of the status proc it causes. Some damage procs are more apparent than others, and the more apparent ones are typically the elemental procs. But if you don't know what the status procs do, it can be hard to understand why they're useful and when to use them. And as for the physical damage procs, there's one that's clearly better than the others, and that's Slash. But to start out with a more basic damage proc, let's talk about Impact. Impact is not a very useful damage type, and that's because the Impact status proc only knocks back enemies. The reason this isn't very useful is because, instead of knocking back an enemy, a status proc can instead help you kill the enemy. And while knocking back an enemy does briefly stun them, which gives you a short amount of crowd control on enemies, it's one of the worst crowd controls in the game. And you have far better options ranging from abilities to other status effects, which I'll go into on later videos. Each damage type has different weaknesses and strengths versus different enemies' armor, health, and shields. Now if we take a look at the codex... I'm just kidding, never use the codex. But if we take a look at the wiki, it'll tell us what health types impact damage is effective against. Instead of going in-depth into how each of these work, I'm just going to cover the different factions and talk about whether or not it's effective against them. And I'm just going to give a gray between fair, okay, and good. I would say impact damage is fair against Grenier, good against Corpus, and fair against Infested, considering it's a neutral damage type. And by neutral, I just mean that it doesn't have any strengths or weaknesses against them. I'm definitely planning on going into what damage effectiveness means in a different video, but for today I'm just going to keep it simple. Overall impact damage is the worst physical damage type, and you're probably not going to be aiming to mod for it other than in specific circumstances. The second physical damage type is Puncture. Puncture is a pretty decent damage type because it allows you to ignore 50% of ferret armor. And most enemies in the game are going to have ferret armor if they have armor. If you're watching this video and you don't know what armor is, it's simply just the yellow health bar. And because armor scaling gets out of control the higher enemies get, the more of it you can remove the better. Which is why Puncture is a decent damage type. Puncture's status proc also weakens enemies, causing them to deal 30% less damage for 6 seconds. This effect can't stack, but you can refresh it every time you proc Puncture on an enemy. So you can basically keep them continuously punctured the entire time, which means that they'll be dealing 30% less damage to you. This is an okay way to gain survivability, but again, like impact damage, the damage types that allow you to kill enemies faster are typically the better ones. And here, Puncture is good against Grenier, fair against Corpus, and okay against Infested. And both Puncture and Impact are more defensive in their status procs. Slash, however, is purely offensive, and it's one of, if not the best status proc in the game. In terms of physical damage, and honestly just damage in general, Slash is king. And that's because slash damage allows you to ignore enemies' armor and shields. Because of this, even though slash is negative 50% effective against alloy armor, it's still very good against Grenier. The same thing goes for Corpus because it's going to ignore their shields, which is a huge amount of their effective health. Because of this, slash damage is good against Grenier, good against Corpus, and good against Infested, making it basically a trifecta. If you remember one thing about slash from this, it's that it ignores enemies' defensive mechanics, making them basically irrelevant, which is why people mod their weapons for slash. Now because Slash's main appeal is its status proc, you want to be building around the status proc instead of Slash damage itself. Now what do I mean by building around the damage proc? Slash's damage proc called Bleed is interesting, because it doesn't actually scale with your Slash damage. So if you were to mod your Summon Prime with a mod like Fang and Fuselage, that extra 120% Slash isn't actually going to affect your damage proc. It's only going to affect your Slash's initial hit against the enemy. The status proc is calculated separately from your damage against the enemy. What I mean by this is that you can proc slash off of a 1 damage hit, and your bleed proc can still do upwards of hundreds of damage, even though the initial hit was fairly weak. So at this point you're probably wondering what can actually affect the status proc, and there are a few things. Basic damage mods like Serration or Heavy Caliber will affect this damage proc, but elemental mods as well as other IPS mods like Fang Fuselage will not affect its damage. That doesn't however mean that they're bad to use, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the other two basic ways you can increase your slash damage are either by getting headshots or crits. There are a few other ways to increase your damage, but these are the main ways. And I'm trying to keep it simple for this video. 
Now, even though slash mods like Fang Fuselage don't give you more bleed damage, they do increase your chance to proc slash. And that's because the more of a damage type you have on a weapon, the greater the chances that you proc that status ailment. And physical damage types are weighted four times that of elemental damage types. Meaning with physical damage, you only need a fourth of the damage that an elemental damage would need to have the same chance to proc a status. And I'll be going into that in more detail on a video all about status chance. But for this, all you need to know is that the more of a damage type you have, the more of a chance you have to proc its status. And for slash damage, we want to be proccing bleed as much as possible. To see this in action, let's look at a 155 Bombard being shot with the Soma Prime. You can see that my initial damage procs are only dealing between 20 and 50 damage, but the bleed procs on the enemy are dealing between 300 and 700 damage. That's a pretty stark contrast, and I'm hoping that illustrates why slash procs are so powerful, because they're going to ignore a huge, huge defensive mechanic like armor. And for this example, I've just exaggerated it for the video, but it's still very good in practical situations while playing Warframe. Although I will say you're going to see the most benefit out of high level content. But I think that covers it for the basics of IPS. Now that I've talked about the different physical damage types, let's look at how they affect weapons. And to stay consistent, let's look at the Soma Prime. The Soma Prime, like the majority of weapons in Warframe, has base physical damage when unmodded. There are certain weapons that have an elemental damage unmodded, like the Amprex, but that's for another video. For this, we're just going to talk about what the IPS numbers here mean because it's not explained very well in the game, and especially when I was starting out, I didn't actually understand what these numbers meant. But basically, weapons in Warframe have composite damage. And what I mean by that is when we look at the Soma Prime here, every single bullet that hits an enemy is going to deal 1.2 impact damage, 6 slash damage, and 4.8 puncture damage. So if you add all those together, you're going to be dealing 12 damage per bullet. And your exact damage is going to be a little weird, because as I mentioned earlier, each damage type has different weaknesses and resistances depending on what you're fighting. But it's not clearly expressed in-game that each of these are part of the same bullet. So I just wanted to make that clear. These aren't the status procs, these are the actual composite damages of the bullet itself. Which may sound very simple as a veteran, but I think for newer players it can be very confusing. At least it was for me. And the per bullet here is specifically for the Soma Prime. If a weapon has innate multi-shot which causes it to shoot multiple bullets at the same time, this is different. So for a weapon like the Heck that shoots 7 bullets at the same time, you would need to add all these numbers up and then divide them by 7 to get the exact amount you're dealing with each pellet. For a completely unmodded Heck, this works out to 75. But going more in depth into that means talking about multi-shot, and I want to save that for a separate video. So in modding for a physical damage type, you have two main options. Like I mentioned earlier, you can put on a mod like Serration that will increase all damage on a weapon, or you can use a damage specific mod like Fang Fuselage that will only increase your slash damage. So you see when I equip Fang Fuselage, my slash damage goes from 15 to 34, and my other two damages remain the same. You can apply this concept to any other damage type. Although I will say with physical damage, you're probably going to be modding for slash more often than not. But I think that about does it for this first video on physical damage. If there's something I didn't cover or there's something I missed, please leave a comment below. And let me know if you guys like the format or if there's anything you want me to change or add. Since this is the first video in the series, I'm not sure what parts are the most useful to cover and what aren't. So any feedback you guys can give me will be much appreciated when I'm looking to make the next video. And if you found this one helpful, please leave a like. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for future content.